What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Canes Insight Daily Podcast, powered by Anajar and Levine, Accident Attorneys. It is midseason of the Hurricanes football season, also midseason of the high school season. So we're going to talk about some recruits that are committed to the University of Miami, how they're doing as seniors, kind of monitoring their progress because they're not finished products when they commit. A lot of guys blow up. Some guys take a step back, but we're going to catch up on everybody that is committed to the University of Miami. We'll watch film, break down some of the things they are doing statistically and otherwise. First, I want to talk about some folks that are very consistent. That is Anajar and Levine, accident attorneys. If you or someone you care about and injured in an accident, you could be entitled to significant compensation. Dial 1-800-747-FREE, 1-800-747-3733. Take back control of your life with Anajar and Levine. Pete, hop in. There good you afternoon, are. D. How you doing? Good, man. Love the final four hat. Yep. Uh, maybe we'll get back there. We got to commit to a basketball. Ben Ahmed, we'll talk about him a little bit. Actually, let's, you know, let's talk about him right now at the top. Um, Miami did get a commit from a center prospect, top 100 player in the nation from New England, originally from Nigeria, came over in 2022. Big center, 6'9", 300 pounds, Ranked, I believe, number 78 overall player in the country. There you go. You see he's a big-body kid. I have heard talking to people around this program. My buddy's kids play AAU in that program. He says that this guy is just a great, great kid. You see the touch. Old-school kind of center. Big body. Likes to rebound. Has some defensive ability, but really his defensive strength is just clogging the paint and grabbing boards. That's what he does best. And then on the offensive end, lefty, nice touch around the basket. Again, number 78 player in the country. Soft hands. Chose Miami over Cincinnati and Xavier. So he's he's a he's a legitimate four-star center, which Miami's needed. Yeah, I mean, look in, in college basketball, D, you don't need a you don't need a seven-foot center right necessarily you need a guy who can play big we saw norchad omir the last couple of years he was essentially miami's five man not essentially he was miami center and he was playing that at six five six six so you get a guy here in ahmed who is listed as six nine but he really knows how to use his body like you said soft touch around the rim obviously a lefty and look at that i mean he he's leaning into the contact a lot of these big guys, they don't have the coordination, especially at that age, right, to to do a lot of the stuff you're seeing here in these clips and um, move to the next clip here as well. Um, but, yeah, man, this is, a, this is a big pickup for Miami. Obviously, Boozer's announcing tomorrow. We'll see what happens there. Miami's been been in the mix there for a bit. But, yeah, this is, this is a big pickup for Miami. Inside is a guy who looks like he has the skills to be someone who can play right away. Yeah, and again, insider info on that program. Everybody says this guy's a great kid. Not just a good kid, a great kid. So uh, intangibles seem to be there. Obviously, Canes fans are going to think about big Reggie Johnson from about a decade ago. That would be the closest comp as far as someone like this. At the University of Miami, you know, you, you bring in Lynn Kidd this year. Now, Lynn Kidd wasn't as as big, you know, as, as heavy as this kid is. I think this kid's also a better rebounder. Kind of reminds me, Pete, um, Number five for North Carolina in the past two years, Armando uh, Baycott. Baycott, you know, kind of a little, little bit of that with his size. Not necessarily the kind of guy that's going to be flying above the rim or covering pick and rolls that you say is an NBA kind of guy, but someone with that touch and, and with that ability to really be a double double machine. I think at the college level. Yeah, and look at this. I mean, he has a nice little nice little post game. Obviously, you know, we see what he can do going towards the hoop, but you know, had a nice little fadeaway shot a moment ago. Look at him running the floor here. So he's got some bounce. He's got some athletic ability. I think Reggie Johnson had some great years at Miami there, but I don't know if he had this sort of ability to, you know, get up and down the floor like this. And listen, he was a nimble big fella. So I don't, I don't want the Reggie Johnson fans out there to come at me, but I just think he's got some ex explosive ability again nice touch there nice move towards the basket and really good hands hands stick out to me here uh again big guys a lot of times they're you can call them big for nothings but he's got he's got some ability to him so and i think size wise you know reggie had a different kind of body i think if this they're both you know this guy i've heard he's lost some weight already if he really tones up and and he's got time. He hasn't even gotten to UM yet. If he really tones up and, and, and works hard in the weight room, um, I think not only could he improve, I think he'd be really good from a physical standpoint, just because the way his shoulders are, the way his body composition is, I think he can really blossom in a college weight program. This is not one of these guys needs to put on a lot of weight, probably more of a guy that needs to reshape a little bit, but he's not, you know, he's not out there lumbering. He's not like the guy from, um, 
from NC State. I mean, you know, it's not that kind of weight loss that we're talking about. Yeah, and this is a top 80 player in the country, ranked 78th in the country on the 247 composite, a top 10 center in the country, and the number two player in the state of Connecticut. So, I mean, look, this is – this is we've seen Coach L recruiting-wise and the staff that he has there now has, has been killing it in recruiting the last few years. Obviously, Jaleel Bethea last year and Matthew Abel – in this recruiting class already as well, a guy who continues to ascend up, up the ratings as a wing player. So great pickup here. We'll see what the boozers tomorrow. Yep. And stay tuned to Kane's inside. We're going to have all that for you as it happens. So switching gears to football again, I, I talked about, we're going to go through the players that are committed to the program right now and, and how they're doing as seniors statistically and otherwise. And let's start right at the top. Pete with Luke Nichols, some quick stats from the commitment from the state of Georgia, four-star player, elite 11 quarterback, 66% passer uh, through the first few games, 1,556 yards, 16 touchdowns, five picks, 11 rushes, 83 yards, a touchdown, also has one catch for 26 yards. So this is somebody I was able to see. Um, I didn't get to see him live. I got to see him on TV against American Heritage, a team we're very familiar with, a team that consistently pumps out Division One players in the secondary. Of course, one of them starts for the Miami Hurricanes. Daryl Porter had another one starting last year with James Williams. They have Gregory Zay Thomas, FSU commit, who, you know, he's a four-star player, looks the part. And and Nickel, as you see the film from this game, he he really showed out on national TV here. You see, it's not gonna he's not gonna wow you with the physical traits. I don't think he is like one of these tooled up quarterbacks where the athleticism, size, or arm strength is exceptional. I think it's all adequate. But the quick decision-making, ability to, to be decisive, to see the field, to find the ball, and then to throw a catchable ball, I think he has all of that in spades. Performed very well at the Elite 11 tournament in this, or Elite 11 competition in the summer. And it's translated. This is the defending state championship team that he plays on. So it's, it's big-time football. There you see him scan the field a little bit more, the athleticism, rolling left and delivering an accurate throw for a good gain. He, his functional athleticism, I think, in particular, surprised me in the Heritage game. There you see him reading the field. He was going against, again, these are Division One players, and he did not look sped up or or out of sorts. Or like you know, Sometimes these guys are like, hey, this is, not, this is not helmets and shorts. I don't know how to play in this kind of game. And they look, they look rattled. Nick uh, Nickel looks like a guy that knows how to play in these kind of games. Yeah, polished quarterback, as you can see from a lot of these clips. And look, I, I think he has some athletic ability to him, right? I don't think that this is a guy, as you see here, they're rolling him out, right? He's he's making different plays, changing the trajectory on, on a lot of these balls. Again, like you said, D, I mean, you see him catching this pass here on the on the reverse pass. And Look, he's he's trying to make a stiff arm. He's he gets tackled, obviously, and and thrown out of bounds there. But he's not he's not he's not a, a, a tiny guy either, right? He's not he's not the tallest quarterback, but he's he's pretty well built there. And a guy that you'd expect to come in right away, pick up the playbook, plays at a big program. That's a that's a nice throw right there, opposite hash, right? So again, you said he's not super toolsy, but I think. At this point, he's a little underrated in that aspect uh, because I think he has more more juice than people probably give him credit for. And you see, like, Emeritus Heritage, sophisticated defense. Here you see him running the ball in a side run, doing all right and finishing strong with power. Uh, one of the earlier plays, they brought defensive back off the edge. He picked up the blitz right away, threw it right at the blitz for a first down. So he's advanced. He's someone that I think can come in right away. And I'm not saying he's going to be your starting quarterback next year with Cam Ward gone, but I think he's going to go onto Green Tree and be able to execute the offense faster than maybe your typical freshman. You compare him to an Emory Williams, which is another kind of, I would say, game manager quarterback, but more of a cerebral quarterback, not someone that's going to blow you away with tools. I think um, Nichols probably the better athlete between him and Emory. Emory's got him on size. Arm strength's pretty similar, but I think athletically, Nichols just looks a little more smoother and coordinated from what I could see. Yep, agreed. Now moving on here at the running back position, Gerard Pringle, one of the fastest players in the country at his position and someone that's been locked in with Miami's class for a while now. And D's had a really strong start to his season. Yeah, from uh, from Armwood, Sefner in the Tampa area. I hope everybody out there, by the way, is doing well after Hurricane Milton. Got to say that. Um, I know we got a lot of fans, a lot of listeners in that area. I hope everybody is doing very well, as well as possible, given the circumstances. So Jared Pringle from that area, 93 carries, 566 yards, 10 touchdowns, six catches, 89 yards, and two TDs. Here you see him against against Tampa Plant. Again, what I like about this guy is his ability to cut full speed. There you go, open field cut, and then get to his track speed. He's a 10-8 kind of runner, so he has speed. He's a 
he's not a track player playing football. He's a running back. He's been doing it against tough competition. He's been able to grind out. They played Tampa Tech. He had a very big game, grinding out some tough yardage against a D1 type defense. So he's a real running back. He he can absorb contact. He has good balance. He has great feet for cuts. And then he has that 10 8 speed to take it to the house. So a lot to like with, with Pringle. I think the only negative is just I've been around him in person. Uh, at, at UM when he visited in the spring, he's probably about five, nine, you know, he's not a tall, he's not a tall running back. He's, he's a well-built uh, running back. He's a guy that does have some strength to him, but he's really, you know, he's not like a Jordan Lyle or a Fletcher that really impresses you physically, but there you, there you see the speed and he does have quickness. It's that combination of quickness, balance, vision, and um, all the traditional running back stuff. He's got that. And then he has the 10, eight speed on top of it to turn a run like this, which could have been a good gain for anybody into a long touchdown. He can do that at the college level because of his speed. Yeah, and he he looks to me like a guy who's not trying to just bust everything outside. A lot of times it's that sort of speed, the high school level, it's it's just so easy to bounce it to the outside and get up the sideline and score. But he's, like you said, he's trying to run between the tackles. He has that ability to him, um, and the contact balance is impressive. No question about it. So staying in uh, in the South, but leaving the state of Florida here, let's talk about Dalen Upshaw. 21 catches, 478 yards, 22 yards per catch, and 10 touchdowns. This is a player out of Phoenix City in Alabama, Central High School. Here you go against Auburn High School, obviously uh, Auburn, Alabama. We'll talk about that connection in a while. But Upshaw, man, this guy has been extremely productive. Here you see him high point in the ball with the play strength to finish again. 21 catches, 478 yards, and 10 touchdowns. We're halfway through this year. This guy could have a 20 touchdown season in high school, which is unusual as a receiver. Um, but what I like about this guy, and he goes to the same high school as Cam Coleman, who's a true freshman starting for Auburn right now. Of course, Auburn is making a push for Dalen Upshaw's commit. That's something to watch. He's been telling people he's committed to Miami. I could see reasons why he would stay committed to Miami. Of course, if you watch Auburn on the field and you watch Miami on the field and you're a wide receiver, a lot of reasons why Miami would be more appealing to you, but you got to respect the home court advantage. But, you know, this is just one game that he played, but everything is with his hands. He's a sharp cutter. And look at the finishes. Finish, yeah. This guy is a strong player. And we've talked about this, Pete, on the podcast. This is something that's, you know, kind of near and dear to my heart when it comes to evaluating receivers. You need intangibles, you need production, and you need strength. People get too enamored, in my opinion, with athletic ability at receiver. Obviously, you can't just have all Johnny tryhards. This is college football. Miami is built on explosive players. And this guy does have explosive ability, particularly in his cuts. But you need play strength and you need craftsmanship and you need production. There's a lot that goes into playing receiver besides running in straight lines or making spectacular catches. You got to run routes, which as you can see, this dude is a, is a really sharp route runner. All the reports on him from his coach are that his intangibles are through the roof, hardworking guy. He produces on the field and then he's strong, which helps him after the catch. It really helps him at the catch point and even separating. And what I like about his game D is, is the same play we just saw before, but he's not just a gadget player at receiver right we've seen him already multiple you know multiple clips from one game here went went deep um another one where they obviously throw him some screens here he is running routes right and out i mean he does different things right a lot of times you watch some of these highlights for receivers and it's just like yeah they're scoring every play but it's the same play every time or it's the same one or two routes so they use him in a variety of ways i think that should be able to get him on the field pretty early at Miami because of because of that. Yeah, and if you look at I'm just pulling up the top receivers in the league right now statistically, and it's early. It's NFL. Nico Collins, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, DJ, DK Metcalf, Jaden Reed, the only small guy on the list from Green Bay, Brian Thomas, Chris Godwin, Malik Neighbors, CD Lamb, Jawan Jennings, Alec Pierce, Drake London. So all those names, aside from from Reed, these are big, strong guys. They have play strength. Even the smaller guys who've had success, like a Tyree Kill, who's been the best receiver in the league, he's a rock. You need play strength in this league. Puka Nakua last year as a rookie took over the league. Uh, Cooper Cup a couple of years ago took over the league. Those are guys with play strength, with core strength, with balance, with the ability to finish, with the ability to stay on schedule when people are trying to knock them off and get them off balance. I think that is the most underrated trait in receivers. Upshaw has it. Combine that with the production, with the route running, the, the explosiveness out of his breaks, the ability to catch the ball with his hands, uh, and then the work ethic. I think you have what is very much the proto what, look, prototype receiver you think of Jeremiah Smith. That's like the elite, right? They're not saying that's what we're talking about. But in terms of if you just look at the model of what's been successful, 
He has all of those traits without being a, you know, 10, 500 meter guy or a 20, you know, three uh, foot jumper. You know what I mean? He's, he's, it's, it's a different type of skill that he has. Another receiver now that Miami just flipped. We did an entire episode on this guy a couple of days ago with Steve-O, who did a great job breaking his game down. Joshua Moore was a formerly a, a Florida commit. You and I have had a chance to see this guy in Camp D. And, man, he he's a, he's a big receiver who has physicality and knows how to use his body. Yeah, so similar in upshot to some ways different than others. So the physicality is similar. The production is similar. This guy is that – is he's had 1,900 yards over his sophomore and junior year, and then already through this year, 32 catches, 510 yards, and five touchdowns. And the season just, you know, we're halfway through, so he's on pace for another thousand yard year. Um, I think where he's different than an Upshaw is he's definitely much more in the contested catch lane. There you can see him speeding up and making a nice diving catch. This guy's excellent in 50-50 situations. Um, has the has tremendous ability to jump. There's a clip of him as a senior. This is just one game, by the way, of the senior year against Plantation. There's a clip of him as a senior against Cardinal Gibbons, breaking a bunch of tackles, keeping his balance, scoring the touchdown, then doing a gymnastics kind of tumbling routine in the end zone, getting super high up on his backflip. So this guy has some spring in his legs, has some has some um, explosiveness despite being a big guy. Here you see, nice little dig, catches it with his hands, with his hands. gets upfield, jumps over a guy. You know, so uh, that's a, that's that's college stuff right there. And then here you see, you know, another one quick hitch, able to stop despite you know a lot of those routes can be tough for six four guys because they don't gear down as quickly. He does again, catches it with his hands, explosive. And look at the finish right here. Well, not quite, but <laughs> they didn't want to tackle him. But this is a guy that can get, do a lot of different things. And he's productive. He's big. He's super athletic. On three has him as a borderline five star player. Two four seven has him as a high three star. There's a big gap there. But I think two four seven is going to bump him up. Not quite as high as on three has him, but I believe they're going to they're going to get him uh, up to that solid four star range. So he's a blue chip player that you stole from Florida, and he's having a very productive senior year, which matches what he did as a sophomore and junior. So Upshaw and Moore, your two wide receiver commits, highly productive players, which we've done studies. There's different traits that correlate with success at the college level. A lot of times it's physical traits. Wide receiver, less physical traits, more so your production in high school translates at a higher level than other positions. Moore is one who's been very productive. The yards after catch for a guy that size is impressive to me, D. And look, I'm not saying that's going to be how he's used at the next level, right? You, you said it. He's amazing in those 50-50 ball situations. But that he has that ability and he has that in the bag, just shows you the sort of athlete that he is. Yes, sir. Now moving on here. Oh, go ahead. We're going to nope, say nothing. Let's go. Let's I was going to say boys. we're going to talk. Well, I'm oh, no, talk bigger boys. Yeah, I was going to talk about the about the number one center in the country. I get excited about about these guys right here. Um, so we'll start with SJ Alafatuli, which the it, we're getting some clips on him now. There's been limited stuff on his huddle, so. It's exciting to see uh, some of his new stuff coming out here. Yeah, this dude's like Bigfoot, man. It was very hard to get footage, but now that you see it, it's worth the wait. Here he is playing guard. Um, he is so twitchy and quick. There he's in big number mm. 65. You see him just mm. dry, throwing this guy, throwing out the club, and then finishing with the nastiness. His suddenness. Here you go. You see him in space. Oh. Look, he's like a fullback when you see him out there. I mean, he, look at that. He really could play fullback for you. As a true freshman, we've seen that happen with some of the quicker tack, uh, centers. His testing numbers, I don't have them right in front of me, but you know, I from what I understand, there's some strength there too, just straight power. He was one of the most athletic offensive linemen that's been evaluated in some years as far as 40, shuttle, all the kind of movement stuff, and you see it on film. This Look at the acceleration and the finish. He looks like a fullback out there. He's not going to be a guard. He's smaller. He's about 6'2", 270. Um, very good in the weight room as far as lifting, but he does need to add some mass before he gets to play in the ACC. He'll be an early enrollee. But this guy has everything you want as the center of the future, a future of the offensive line. Of course, adding Polynesians to the offensive line, always a good thing. This dude is the real deal. Yeah, movement skills. I mean, the pop that he has, obviously low center of gravity. It's It's got to be fun for the Gorman offensive coordinator there because, look, you can get more out of him there at the high school level at, at guard. And the way they move him around, the way they pull him, Miami and Mario Cristobal and Coach Coach uh, Mirabal always talk about those guys are those guys are offensive weapons for them. And man, he's going to be playing center, so it's it's a bit different. But sh I, I can't wait to see him here once he continues to add some some weight. And again, I think he'll be a guy that once he gets on Green Tree early, D, we'll be talking about saying, look, he may not start right off the bat year one. You have Ryan Rodriguez coming back potentially. 
as, as a as a starter at center next year. I, I believe he's probably in line to be that. But SJ Alafatuli coming in, I think he's going to be exciting. Yeah, and it, look, Gorman, what a program! These guys are so tough. Everybody excited about what we see with Elijah Lofton as a true freshman. Elijah Lofton has been playing fullback in those short yardage situations. I really do think this kid, as a true freshman, if he's not starting on the offensive line, which is that's not out of the cards itself, and he, if he needs to gain weight, you could put him right there at fullback. And I think he can play for you day one in the ACC in these short yardage situations. He's that athletic. Next up here, offensive lineman Jaden Wilkerson. I couldn't find anything from his huddle this year, D, uh, but a guy who has the traits that we all look for at the offensive line spot. Yeah, he's someone I watched him. Um, they hit a game on TV for like NFL Europe. I, they went over to place a team from, I want to say, it might have been from London. It was one of these European teams and one of these games that NFL NFL's international uh, program puts on TV. So I was able to watch him on YouTube TV. And a uh, big guy. He's definitely got size. He can, he can move. He was playing left tackle. It was, uh, it was hard to tell against the pass because they, they didn't really test him with the pass rush. But this is a big dude with athletic ability, played basketball at a high level. And I think, you know, he's somebody that you're watching his development close. I, I love to see in the state playoffs, see what he can do. Orlando Edgewater is going to be a team that's going to be playing in those big games as the season goes on. There you see some big 73 with some nastiness. But, you know, watch, just watching him in a full game setting, I thought his effort was good. I mean, it could have been – it wasn't like totally nasty where he's like – bearing guys out to the snap, but also wasn't like where you're questioning his, is he a finesse guy? I think it was right down the middle, solid, um, engaged in the game. And, and he has some size to be a physical presence. It'd be interesting to watch his development as a basketball player continue to become an offensive lineman. Another guy with these traits, the movement skills, the size, Demetrius Campbell at the offensive line spot here from Orlando Christian Prep, as these are his midseason highlights um, so we get a good look at what he has done this season. Yeah, this one's different. So look at the speed on this guy. So Demetrius Campbell, another basketball player from the Orlando area. I think he's originally from Maine, uh, New England, kind of like Miami's newest commit on the basketball court, another New England guy. But you see here, boom. So Campbell is playing a lower level than what Wilkerson is playing at this year. They were both small school Orlando basketball players where they committed. Wilkerson is now playing a senior year at Edgewater, which is a bigger public school <laughs> in Orlando. So this guy, Campbell's at least he smashed that guy and point to him. Campbell is playing – lower level comp, more of a run based offense. But man, what I like about him that maybe is different than what I see with Wilkerson is you see his athleticism and his movement. I don't know if his body's as good as Wilkerson. They're both pretty big, but this guy's um, finishing as a run blocker. He's playing against small kids. Okay. So take that into account, but he's doing what he's supposed to do against smaller competition, which is dominating him, putting him in the dirt and, and taunting him a little bit, you know, showing some nastiness to him. And then his suddenness, I mean, this guy has speed and acceleration when he's getting to the second level, you can see the basketball athleticism play out there. Would love to see, you know, I saw some limited camp footage, you know, you had a tough time with some of the better pass rushers in the state. I think that's going to be probably the biggest learning curve going from a basketball player to a run based offense in the smaller divisions to now pass blocking elite guys like a Marquise Lightfoot, Booker Pickett, guys like that on Green Tree. That will be an adjustment for him. I think that's where you probably will see the, the, the growing pains the most. But you can't coach nasty, in my opinion. You can't coach athleticism. You can't coach frame. He has those three things. Um, and I think. You can teach him technique. He'll learn the timing of the pass blocking. He's a great athlete. He does have a good frame for it already. So that's something that he can develop. It, to me, is very hard to develop the nastiness. I know Al Golden used to say toughness is a skill that can be developed. I'm not a big believer in that. I think you recruit tough players that are doing stuff like this on film and then teach them how to play football, assuming they have the records of physical tools. Teaching a player how to be tough, to me, is a waste of time and a waste of energy for the most part. That's my personal philosophy. You guys disagree in the comments, let us know. But that's something that I certainly believe in. Look at look at this last play here, lining up in the backfield, right in front of leading the way for the quarterback. So, I mean, look, the, the, the finishing is on every play. And I think I talked to someone familiar with his recruitment at Miami and – basically told me, look, we don't we don't worry about the smaller levels of competition as long as they're dominating the way they're supposed to and finishing every snap at that position, which is exactly what you said. And the technique, look, you can get a, you can get away with a lot of stuff when you're playing at the at the lower levels like that. So I'm sure he'll take his lumps early on Green Tree, but year or two from now, I, you know, I think I think similarly, both of these guys we just talked about, you look at Frankie Tinelau, 
for, for Miami, who I think has made some, at least in the, in the couple games he's played this year, shown some positive things. I know you've heard some good things about, about him, you know, at, at the practice level. He's gotten scout team player of the week as well. So he was a guy coming over internationally, was played at LaSalle for, for a year, and I think got started to get comfortable. They did a really good job with him over there. But once you got to Miami, different level of competition, you're, you're seeing now a year and a half later, there there could be something to work with there. I think these two are similar in, in, in respects to him. Yeah, and Tinelau's senior film was great dominating that LaSalle competition. And I agree. I think Tinelau is going to be a starter at Miami, assuming injury and everything else stays good and, and he stays, you know, stays – Stays on track. I think his talent is that of a starter at the University of Miami. Hopefully, Demetrius Campbell follows a similar trajectory for the U. All right, D. Let's look at the next one here. The last offensive lineman committed at this point, Max Buchanan, someone that I know the staff is very excited about. Yeah, we also have TK Mew, by the way, Pete, oh, yes, so, so get yes. that one ready too. So Max Buchanan, though, I think is somebody who um, he's much more for, further along than the last two guys we talked about. This guy's at Sanford Seminole playing big-time competition already. There you see him in a college stadium um, playing the uh, opener against Jones, which is actually the same team as Darian Coleman, Miami's 26 quarterback commit, and Vernell Brown, Miami's big target. This dude is nasty. He's playing left tackle, projects probably more as an interior lineman because of his body, but his athleticism stands you know he's able to hang on the edge there against good competition it shows you his athletic ability but a you know he's pretty far along he plays low uses i mean he's he's not a project let's put it that way he still needs to get bigger to just get in the college weight program but this is somebody who knows how to play uh demeanor wise outstanding look at him flip that guy right there and look at him you heard him in interviews he's got that miami swag to him um, there's a kid from central Florida could have gone to Florida state could have gone to any number of sec schools chose to go to the university of Miami, trusting crystal ball and mirror ball. You see the pop right there. Uh, he is a nasty dude. I just, I love, I love his body positioning for being a big guy. Like, like he is, he he's coordinated. He can get low. He's flexible. And, um, you know, he can, he can do his thing because I'm just, I'm very impressed with, with his readiness to play, whether it's center guard or tackle, you see him, look at that getting off. And, and and hitting that combo block and finishing, he is somebody that can do a lot of good things for you. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me, D, to see him end up playing. I agree with you, probably an interior guy, but I could see him being a right tackle. Jalen Rivers is a guy who a lot of people have always kind of pigeonholed into a guard position, which he's played at Miami, but he continues to do a great job at tackle. Obviously, he's been hurt, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like I think he's someone that, Yes, he may not be your your prototypical NFL tackle in terms of, of length and, and all of that, but to me, I think he could get the job done there. So we'll see once he ends up on campus. Yeah, get him in here and let him figure it out. Um, I think that's why that's why you bring in guys with mentality, with body types, and, and figure out where they fit. I do think interior-wise, that's a place where Miami's lacking. You do have Tommy Kinsler as a long-term tackle prospect Oakland Lola plays some tackle Markel Bell he's a junior college guy so he's he's only got one more year after this one but you have some guys that tackle um you're hoping these these other guys develop a tackle I think the portal you could see them pursue tackles that jump in there that are highly athletic and talented kind of up, high upside tackles I could see that being a, a factor in the portal if someone enters there but a guy like Buchanan solidifies your interior you need more bullies in my opinion uh, in the room that, that you could trust inside this is one of them now, last guy here on the offensive line, as I made the mistake there, TK Mew. We have some clips here from his season. He was a bit of an under-the-radar guy when he committed to Miami, um, but another one who plays, I believe, smaller co competition here, but uh, is a very impressive guy. Yeah, he was in a uh, spring evaluation for Mirabal in person. You see he's a shorter guy, but he plays with nastiness. He has some strength. He's playing left tackle there. He's even driving this guy down, flipping him. Um, he he's someone who's, he'll need some more work than I think it'd be Cannon, but he brings a similar mentality. He has he has a lot of ability. You see him catching the ball, looking at a big man running, and uh, and looking good running. I think he got in the end zone. There you go. Oh, they called him down at the one. So he's someone who has some athleticism, has some has some movement skills. Is not six 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 seven, but he's you know six four six three, strong bodied, and uh, and has the attitude. Again, this is someone where Mirabal is able to see him in person in spring. And they extended the offer and pursued them heavily. So that's a good sign. When you see someone in person, you see their body type, you see how they carry themselves snap to snap, practice whistle to practice whistle, and then you evaluate from there. Uh, so that is how he got his offer. He's been firmly committed, and uh, now he's off to a pretty good start here as a senior. 
All right, D, before we talk about these tight ends, I wanted to talk about our friends at Asset Dash, the best portfolio tracker and rewards program in crypto where you can do everything from tracking your investments, earning rewards, and now buying over 1,000 different cryptocurrencies on Solana natively through the app. If you download the app right here, you see the QR code, go to AssetDash.com, download it, and for a limited time only, enter the code CANES, all caps, at sign up, and you will receive an upgraded premium Asset Dash Gold membership for free for life. Again, CANES, all caps, once you download it and download Asset Dash for all your portfolio tracking needs, cryptos, NFTs, and stocks. If you invest in something, Asset Dash supports it. Yeah, and also, Pete, let's talk about Miami Hurricane Team Store because the Adidas Alpha Boost version two has arrived use promo code insight 20 you get 20 percent off your first purchase at the miami hurricane team store and you're going to want these new shoes it is fall you're going to be going to youth practices like i am just trying to be active be out and about get those adidas alpha boost version two shoes Pete, you're telling me alpha boost is like the new technology yeah, right? boost the boost. boost yeah this is the alpha you got the ultra boost you got the alpha boost but the boost technology you see it right there in the in the heel of the shoe right there it's the best most comfortable thing in any athletic shoes these days that's so. a real thing it's not like when you put the pump up on the on the on the front of the, of right. the shoe right right like an actual right. you feel, feels like you're walking on a cloud a pillow there you go alpha boost and look they got all the sizes available so there you go promo code insight 20 on that one all right let's get the defense end here well uh tight end uh, oh, actually yeah let's which, go. Is, which is an exciting position for this class uh brock shot I think he's been both of our maybe favorite commits in the class. You know, if you put a gun to my head and asked me who I thought was the best player committed right now, um, and and look, he's not the same player in terms of skill set as an Elijah Lofton, but I think he's similar in respects that he's going to create mismatch problems all over the field uh, when he gets to Miami. Yeah, I would say you know CJ Alafatuli, you could put in that category. But here, look at Brock Shot. I mean, his his midseason highlight would take the whole podcast up. I think it's like ten minutes long. Yeah. So this is a dude that's, that plays both ways, plays basketball as well, tested well, very productive against lower level competition, dominates lower level competition, which is what you want to see. Where's number nine? Just like our guy Elijah Lofton. I think they're similar, different. Um, in terms of the, the the similarities, look at that catch that they that they're versatile, true football players, extremely physical, play very hard. Um, Lofton could easily be a defensive player for the Canes. Shot had to offer for for Notre Dame to play linebacker. You see him here at defensive end taking over the game. Guys that you could use. This guy's gotten carries. You see that play right there, the little tunnel screen. You saw Lofton get the same exact play. Now this guy's taking it to the house with speed. I think if you're comparing, contrasting him and Lofton, both six two, body's a little different. Lofton's going to be thicker. Uh, this is more of a taller, angular athlete, although he's not that much taller in height. Wait, wait, wait. We're giving Lofton 6'2", D? Yeah, Lofton's probably 6'1". This guy probably 6'2", 6'3". Uh, but Lofton bigger, you know, wider, a wider, more of a running back body. This guy's just more uh, angular and lean. I would say Lofton's probably a little better agility-wise through the hips, uh, just a little more fluidity to Lofton's game. But I would say Shot has the edge in terms of straight line speed. I think he got tested. I want to say he's verified in the four fives. From the off season. So he's someone with legit four or five speed. You see it on tape. Again, the hips are not as fluid as as a Lofton. I think that would be the big advantage for Lofton with the two. But speed wise, you got to give it to shot. And they're both animals. I mean, they just play so, so hard with such physicality. You can use them at fullback, which is a lot uh shot has played in high school. You could use him at wide receiver, which you see him lined up wide here, uh, making a, a catch like him go up and, and push a guy right out of the way, catch the ball with his hands. And he does run the ball a little bit too. There you see, again, this is basically what you've seen from Lofton, that little jet sweep with the stiff arm. That's something we're, I think we're going to see from Lofton as the season goes on. So similar, but similar in the right ways, which is tough football player, super athletic and talented, but different different skill sets in other ways. And uh, two guys you want on the same team. He, the, man, the thing that sticks out to me is he's fast. Like he's he's moving. I understand he's not playing against, you know, South Florida competition, South Florida speed, but you can just see when he's moving with the ball and even that that jump he just had on defense where he batted the ball down like he's got legit burst and i think the fact that he is i mean he's got some size to him as well like he's he's going to be a tough guard for a smaller defensive back for a safety you know and at the same time got a lot of speed for some of those linebackers yeah i think uh now i'm not making this comparison because i think Brock Bowers is just more 
fluid. You know, he's just his his lateral quickness, functional athleticism, I think is is pretty special. You know, he's on a Hall of Fame track, some people think, as as a tight end. So I'm not saying that they're a direct comp that way, uh, just because their first name is Brock and they're kind of the same size. But I will say um their high school measurables are very similar in terms of size, speed, those kind of things. So this guy can run. He can really, really run. Again, I think that's an advantage he has over Lofton. Not that Lofton is slow by any means, but I think Shot has probably more of a downfield speed component than Lofton, probably less in the you know through the hips fluidity category. Now, the other tight end committed, Luca Gilbert, someone who's been on the Canes Inside podcast before. If you haven't checked that out, you can just search Luca Gilbert and Canes Inside, and the interview will come up. But you're talking about an absolute beast in terms of his size here, D. Listed as 6'7", 250. And I, and I know that there's been some talk that he's that he's definitely put on weight since since last season. You know, the Canes staff really fell in love with him when he came on his visit. Um, but you see his ability as a pass catcher, and then we'll see later in this as well, can really block as well. Yeah, this is a, a very competitive league. This is where Miami got Zach Carpenter. Zach Carpenter's from Cincinnati. This He played in this exact league. So this is very, very high level football, um, a lot of D1 players. So, you know, tight ends, high school production is tricky because they're not always utilized. I think Gilbert actually is on probably the higher end as far as how often they throw to him, but he's really more of a blocker. But see here, I think what jumps out about his, his look at that's a beautiful play. Uh, again, top competition. When you see his senior film, he's catching the ball more. I think his fluidity stands out. Obviously, 6'7", 250, that's the first thing that stands out. This guy's a monster size-wise. But he really does. Look at there. Look at that diving catch. I mean, he could see, he's a natural receiver. Uh, he's very, very fluid. He's a hands catcher. He's a very willing blocker, which is what most people are going to think when they see a guy who's 6'7", 250. And, of course, you need that. You see Cam McCormick continuing to get snaps from Miami. I think this guy's a more talented athlete, more talented receiver. He plays basketball as well. I would say one thing. That you, you want to see more of is just the ability to separate and 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 the twitch to to separate quickly. But that's something I think will come with 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 reps as a receiver and with practice as a receiver. But the natural fluidity, the natural toughness and willingness to block, and then of course six seven two fifty. This guy brings a lot to the table. Yeah, and he looks like a pretty natural receiver. D. I mean, in some of these clips, like there was there was one earlier in, in the highlight where. You can see him get up the seam and he turns his head at the perfect time when he realizes he's, you know, he catches the soft part of the zone. So he seems to have a feel for the receiving part of that position. And again, bring some nastiness to the table here. We see, I mean, blocking wise, I remember when, when he first came into the picture, some people were saying, man, maybe this guy's a future tackle at Miami. And I, I would never count anything out with, with crystal ball and, and mirror ball. Right. But I, I really like him at that tight end spot and has the ability to, to block and catch. Yeah, look, if you, you don't have to have a tackle necessarily. If you have a guy that's about the size of a tackle mm -hmm. that can block like a tackle and that can catch the ball with his hands and run routes, that just opens up your offense, especially first down, you know, uh, third down, goal line, the deep red zone. A guy like this makes a huge, huge difference with his He's versatility. He's big, man. He's tower. I mean, and 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 this is a league where you're going to get bigger kids as well. So he's a. Uh, He's he's there, and I man, once he gets in that weight room, I, I think it'll be pretty scary. And look, how many body catches have you seen? I, I've seen very little body catches. I mean, everything is oh, with there, his hand. Maybe one right there. Well, that was the right uh, that was the right type of catch for that for that play. He knows how to use his body, but he he he's someone who I think does have uh, just natural hands and natural receiving to him. Now it's a matter of just getting used to separating from from. Bobby Washington's, you know, Camp Pruitt, guys with those kind of speed. But I think he can do it, just needs to practice that at that level. And that's what he's coming down to Miami for, to develop, I think, as a complete tight end, which he's capable of being. All right, we'll flip over to the defensive side of the ball now. And we will start with Herbert Scroggins, who I know you've been a huge fan of. Do you hear some clips uh, against Warner Robins High School? And uh, right off the bat with the sack. Yeah, one of the top players in the class. Talk about... Who are the top players in the class? This is a guy's name doesn't come up enough. I think 247 is way too low on him. Um, you know, they do a good job, but in terms of ratings, where I think they're just off, Herbert Scroggins is one. I mean, look at the physics. That's one game against a top, top, high level Georgia team and Warner Robbins. And look at this dude just dominating. People in Georgia, people around this program say this is the guy. This is an underrated stud player. Auburn was after him. The SEC was after him. So it's not like he was a diamond in the rough for the college teams. But I think from a two four seven standpoint, they have him as a high three star. They're 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 off with this guy. This is a this is a clear four star player. Super productive. He's not the biggest guy in the world. But if you're asked, look at there. There you see him in space. You know, nice tackle, nice nice movement. 
he's somebody that you could see playing that Elijah Alston role this year, playing that Malik, Malik Bryant role this year. He's got more than enough size for that. And he's a natural pass rusher, natural football player. He's a great student, great athlete, great, um, you know, big time rebounder on the basketball team. He's gobbling up rebounds. So he's somebody who does a lot of things that portend to future success, including being very productive at a high level uh, against high level Georgia competition when he, when he's against it. Yeah. Motor. I mean, I love that play in space D because there's just guys who you can get after the pass rusher and look, that's, that's what he's going to be doing a lot of at Miami. But if you don't have that ability to play in space, it's going to, it's going to show itself one, one way or another, um, and to me, that that's just a whole nother thing to his bag there. But it seems like he has a really good feel for pass rushing. So I'm with you and, and high character kid, right? I mean, high high academic guy and all that. So to me, one of the steals of the class. And he likes contact. You see him absorbing blocks. He's even getting off blocks. You see him, you know, taking on blocks when necessary with his shoulder, with physicality. Um, put him in the Elijah Olsen role as an all-conference type player, a guy that Miami really, really valued highly during the recruiting process. And I think if, you know, look, every, we were going to talk about the positives with all these guys, but as people, in terms of people, I think are too, uh, are ranked too low on the recruiting services that I think is just a mistake by those guys. Herbert Scroggins put his name right at the top. This is a four-star player all day. And then another defensive lineman here, someone that you're, Extremely high on Micah Newton out of Newberry High School, Miami, also recruiting his teammate Jarquez Carter, someone else who's been on the Canes Inside podcast. But Newton was someone who, from what I've heard, when Mario saw his saw his recent tape, was was extremely excited about. Yeah, 23 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, six sacks. By the way, I kind of screwed up on the stats earlier. Scroggins had 10 tackles for loss and 12 and a half sacks, just to give you an idea of his production. Brock shot uh, also very productive, um, but but talking about Newton, you, you see how twitchy he is. He plays with Jarquez Carter, a uh, uh, Ohio State commit to Miami. Would also love to get. I know he's some good young talent on this team as well. But Newton is a, is a flip from NC State. A team that's traditionally been good with linemen, good at finding particularly defense alignment that are underrated. A lot of guys in the pros starting. CJ Clark, uh, who's in the rotation for the Canes, another one of those guys from NC State. But Newton. He he really has a, just a ton of athletic ability. You see the motor, you see the production. Again, you talked about the stats. This is a guy's already got six sacks, playing a lot of interior, also playing on the edge. Um, with him, it's all about is he going to gain weight? He's about six two two sixty, I think verified. But those who've been around him say this guy's got a good body. You know, he's not um, a guy you're worried about him gaining weight. He's going to be a good looking, you know, two ninety five, three hundred pounds, more athletic player but he'll be able to get up to the the requisite weight for that type of player. And he's going to have the speed and athleticism. You see it here on these highlights. He's the first one off the ball. He can change directions. He can sink his hips and he's very, very physical, very sudden. And he plays hard, man. That's, that's something with defense alignment that um, you don't always get. Sometimes you have to bite the bullet on that a little bit because the talents are so rare at this position. You know, defense alignment is probably the position where you need traits the most because there's just in short supply. So when you get a guy with athleticism that also plays hard and is going to have the body eventually to be what you need in the ACC, uh, you're excited to get him. Yeah, the inside outside of versatility is what really intrigues me with him. D, the way that Miami changes, you know, the, their their personnel depending on the situation and. Guys like Mesidor and Bain, who we see how well they've they've played as interior pass rushers recently. Um, he's someone who look when when people say that a lot of times they get labeled as a tweener, but this guy's got the juice, right? You're, you're not you're not talking about a guy who, you know, they're playing on the edge, right, as a pass rusher in these situations. So they're trusting him to win on the outside as well. And then we see him playing here against the run as well. So I think as he puts that good weight on. And he's already twitched up, but man, could be really an exciting player once he gets to Miami. And, and I'm not saying he's going to be this kind of guy, but when Miami evaluates a guy and they say this is a guy on the defensive side of the ball, I think of Cole McConaughey, who who's playing real snaps. He played a little bit against Cal during, you know, it was all obviously they were all real snaps. It was a tight game the whole way through. And then OJ Frederick, who's a day one starter at the at the cornerback position. Those are two three-star guys that you flip from, let's say, mid-major type teams. Um, Frederica, a flip from West Virginia. Cole McConaughey, a flip from Louisville. Look at Micah Newton, a flip from NC State. Somebody that Miami just evaluated and said, you know what, we had this guy wrong. This guy's good. We got to get this guy. Um, similar recruitment 
similar evaluations. We'll see if the result is similar, but this is a guy that I like. And I, I think, you know, pay attention to the timing of these kind of offers and, and, and scoops. If you, if you're evaluating guys, like if you miss on a big recruit, which we saw for 15 years at the university of Miami, you miss a big battle. Then on signing day, you're trying to flip someone else that oftentimes it's like a backup plan. That's different than a guy like this, that you just say, wow, this guy's a guy we need. We didn't have him initially on our radar. Let's get him here in, in July when he committed late July, you know, early August, let's just get him in the boat. And then, um, hope he has a good senior year, which certainly he is having. Someone who's kind of in the same boat, I would say, is Dante Simpson, a uh, kid out of Chaminade. Madonna was committed to Maryland, I believe, D, correct? Um, and as you see on these clips, he's, uh, he's a guy who's who's young, right, for his age, but I think someone that Miami did a good job of of getting in here. And, I mean, he, he's wrecking havoc all over this tape. Yeah, this is a very different kind of kid, right? So, I think with him compared to Newton, Newton, you see the productivity, you see consistent uh, productivity. I think with Simpson, it's not as consistent, but when he goes, he can dominate. One of the younger defense alignment in the class, I think what jumps out to, with him, number one is the size. We talked about Mike and Newton needing to gain to gain weight to be what you want him to be. Donta Simpson is somebody who I think is, is really trying to maintain his weight, and I've heard him compared to a guy that you're very familiar with, with Pete, which is John Ford. Out of Dillard, I know David Lake made that comp. I thought that was a good comp um, as far as his his uh, his body type for being such a young player. So this is a guy with rare size that you at his age and as a younger player for his class that jumps out. Also had one of the quickest change of direction times in the Southeast for defense alignment. You know we have these Under Armour camps where they test all these guys and they try to measure their 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 change of direction ability. This is a guy who in that in that L drill had one of the fastest times in the Southeast. So that to me stands out. I'm a big believer in verified testing. Obviously quickness testing with a defense alignment is something that you want to keep an eye on. Certainly. Um, and I think that's something that is a feather in Dante Simpson's cap. That's a verified time. It's not something that you just get inflated by a coach. This is something that was done at a camp with other top prospects in attendance. There you go. So the fastest L drill camp time, 7.05 from Dante Simpson. That was, I believe, third in the entire series of these under armor camps. So, uh, you know, for defense alignment, so it's a feather in his cap. And again, you see the flashes here with him. I think, you know, having seen him, he played a, They played a nationally televised game, um, against a power. I'm not recalling the exact team they played, but it was on ESPN and, and he was not consistently dominant. He had flashes. I think that comes with youth, but if you're Miami and a guy with this kind of size, this kind of quickness and that youth on his size, a youth on his side and being at a program like Chaminade, you, you get him and then you develop him. Yeah, a lot of times with guys like this, D, and look, this is a highlight tape, so we're seeing his best stuff here. But when you say consistency, it's about finishing the play, going and finding the ball, because a guy like him is winning a majority of his reps at the, at the high school level because of his size and, and quickness, as we said. But got to go find the football, right? And that was something with John Ford, right, who's – in the leagues with the Packers, um, but he he's always had that size and athletic ability. But if Simpson can continue to that, we we call it consistency. But again, it's finishing these plays and going and finding the ball. Then I think it could be a you know a big big difference for him. Yeah, thirty five tackles, ten tackles for loss, six sacks, and a block kick for Dante Simpson on the year. Switching gears to somebody who's a totally different type of player, a linebacker, Gavin Nix. He doesn't really have any – IMG's weird with their film, so I don't think he has anything, right, Pete? That's, that's yeah, him, him and Marcelin, I, I couldn't find anything for this year on, on either one. So let's talk about them both. Start, starting with Gavin Nix from IMG, four-star player, top 100 player, according to 247. 19 tackles, two tackles for loss, three pass breakups. You're never going to have great stats at IMG. There's so much rotation going on. This is a guy who's a leader of IMG. There's a, that's a defense full of four stars, five stars, guys going to the biggest schools in the country, place where Miami's done a lot of damage lately. Talk about Francis Malanoa, Riley Williams, Malik Bryant was an IMG kid before headed back to Orlando Jones. Um, you got a lot of IMG kids at the University of Miami, Antonio Tripp. So Miami's done very, very well at that school. This is another kid that Miami's been able to get. And I think what stands out from what I've been told about him, leader at IMG. He's not just a kid that's there for the ride. He's a leader of those guys. Middle linebacker, highly productive, great game film, fast. You know, Notre Dame was after him, Michigan was after him. There's a four-star player. Florida State was after him, top 100 player in the country. Goes to Miami. I think Miami's counting on him to be a leader 
of the defense, not just a guy that plugs in a linebacker, but a guy that gets everybody else lined up because of his IQ. A lot of Jonathan Vilma comparisons from Miami staff. He also met Jonathan Vilma and had a long conversation with him at one of Miami's camps. So that's the kind of t- – I'm not saying the impact and the, the caliber of player. That's the style of player we're talking about here. Yeah, both – I mean, both Nat- Knicks and and uh, Marcelin, we'll talk about leaders, which – at, at linebacker, you, you really have to take that sort of stuff into account and just consistent tackling, which is, as we've seen at Miami at times the last few weeks, is such a fundamental part of defense in general. But uh, I think I think both of those guys bring that to the table. Yeah, Marcelin, another guy, uh, you know, also undersized. Miami Central, major program, just like IMG for the Canes. 32 tackles, six tackles for loss. Um, Central's been good to Miami. You talk about um, him and Mario Wallace. We're not even going to get to another central player, Nickelback, who's been injured the whole year, uh, broke his leg. He's healing up. I heard he'll be okay ultimately. But, you know, both those central kids, undersized, playmakers, tough, longtime producers and starters for Miami Central. Those are the guys you're going to get in your program every single time. So Marcelin, playing like Marcelin, uh, has played since he was a freshman. No no development there. So, D, I'm going to use this little segue here as we're going to talk about Bryce Fitzgerald, a Columbus guy uh, who's had a great season so far to talk about an event this Saturday at Columbus. I know we got some Columbus people listening uh, to the Canes Insight podcast, Coach Cristobal. We we did this on a bye week, right? So Mm -hmm. the Fred Foyle Brewfest this Saturday, October 12th from 4 to 8 p.m. at Columbus. The link to buy the tickets will be in the description here, and it's going to be a great event. Hope to see you guys out there again this Saturday. October 12th, the Fred Foyo Brew Fest. Get your tickets here. It's all about the sea, man. So hope to see you guys out there. If anyone's going to be out there, hit me up. Would love to see you guys. All right, great transition. We're going to talk about a Columbus guy right here, which one of the most interesting guys in the class, hardest guys to peg, quite frankly, in the class. That is four-star Bryce Fitzgerald. Pick Miami over LSU and all the Florida schools. Highly rated player. And uh, you're seeing his midseason highlights here. I mean, where do you put this guy? So he's, he projects as a, he's listed as a safety. I know a lot of people around the program, both around both programs, think he could be a, a corner uh, for the Miami Hurricanes. There you see a, a kick returner. I mean, look at the explosiveness on this guy. Um, just one of the best athletes in the state of Florida overall. Basketball player. He's going to play with the Boozer Twins, who we'll see where they go. Another couple of more Columbus guys. We'll see what decision they make tomorrow. But here you see him a kick returner. Um, I think one area where you could safely project him is right there, you know, doing right, doing, doing exactly what he's doing right there and returning kicks for you. Because as you could see, he has taken kicks to the house consistently at the Miami Dade, you know, high, I don't know what classification Columbus is these days. It changes every other week, but uh, at a high level of South Florida football. And look, I mean, I was about to say this, but every time he picks it off, he's trying to go the other way and score, which obviously Ed Reed is the first person to come to, come to mind when, when you see that, but that is uh not every not every defensive player has that right i mean he has the ball skills which what was the old adage that if you're playing corner it's because you you know you don't have the hands right but he has the ball skills he he's playing deep safety he plays corner as well i i see him as probably more of a safety at the next level um but again here he is interception against aquinas and he's trying to go the other way and 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 score with it here and as we always say with guys like this, so D, I mean, high character guy. I know the staff loves that about him, um, but football player, right? Not just a one position guy and and real athlete, as you mentioned, with the basketball background as well. Yeah, you see the versatility. You see him at receiver. A lot of people think receiver is his best position. I think with him, I've said it a bunch of times. I don't think I'm saying anything out of turn. Physic, physicality. You notice on these highlights, not a lot of tackles, uh, not a lot of big hits. So is he going to be able to take this – considerable athleticism and also instincts, you know, it's not just, he's not just being an athlete out there. You see is when you intercept as many passes as he's intercepting at the high school level, he has great instincts. He has great ball hawking ability. He has a lot of things there. You see him right there. Look at the range. Um, he's probably mad. He didn't catch that, but that was unbelievable range. Um, 11 catches, 103 yards on the year, two touchdowns on offense, two interceptions on defense, three pass breakups. So, and then of course the kick returns. Where does he land? I think it's going to depend on how physical he is. To me, in a perfect world, he is your safety because his ball hawking skill and his ranging skill is so special, but he's got to be more physical to play there. A lot of people think corner for him. He ran a 4-4 verified at the Under Armour camp, so he does have some speed here. You see the kick return against St. Thomas, which you know St. Thomas kicker, kickoff units all 
college football players, future college football players. There you see the speed. Um, I think the physicality for him is going to dictate what he does on defense, whether he plays corner or safety, he just has to be more physical, but athletically, I mean, look at this. I think returns, you could pencil him in as a returner of the future for the Canes. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, I'm a big fan of his and I think he'll be a guy who is much needed at Miami here. We we'll talk more about the secondary class, um, uh, as we go along here, but potential safety duo of him with the next guy we're going to talk about Drake Hilton Drake Stubbs. Yeah, this is a totally different player. So Stubbs, defensive player all day. You know exactly what you're going to get with him. Uh he's out there in Mandarin in Jacksonville. You see look at him blitzing from deep and then man, he reminds me a lot of Zaquan Patterson, different kinds of of athletes a little bit but similar roles where you just put him in a box and they're just going to be unstoppable. Um, look at the acceleration. Stubbs went to a recent national camp. I want to say it was a rivals camp of national guys. I think it was the the camp where they invited all their four stars and five stars. Stubbs being one of the top five safeties in the country was invited out there. And he had one of the fastest, or sorry, one of I think he had the highest vertical leap in the entire camp. So that springiness, that explosion, you see him here, his his acceleration. He has that. He plays some wildcat quarterback there. You see him catching a, a goal line catch on offense. Physical is going to be getting off the block, making the hit. Um, he's somebody that I have no doubts there. He's playing deep. I could definitely see him as a box safety coverage is, is going to be what, you know, what he, what he needs to work on. This guy makes a lot of plays in the passing game. Um, look at the stats on the year, 24 tackles, five tackles for loss, one sack, two interceptions, one taken back to the crib, one pass breakup, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, which I believe he also took to the crib. So this is someone with a nose for the ball. He had a tremendous Ball production last year, intercepting a take it to the house. I know Coach Duasso and, and, and Coach Devo, all the guys with the raw seven on seven team, which we like to support here on the podcast. Uh, they talk about his ball hawking skills at the seven on seven level, where he's not even allowed to hit. So, guy brings a lot to the table, rangy size. He's six two, easy, and you see him. He's he's got the the frame all day. This is a high major player. You're talking about the best players in the class: Oliver Tuli, uh, Brock Shot. Herbert Scroggins put Stubbs right in that category. Uh, Jabari Antoine, who, who doesn't have any film, but we can talk about him. Stubbs, to me, really a, a premier player, very similar to Zaquan Patterson. Big physical safeties that can make a lot of plays. Yeah, and I think he's he's someone who can have a role early, whether it's as a, as a blitzer, you know, matching up against against some of these uh, tight ends, big bigger guys. But great build. Some of these taller safeties sometimes you worry about their range and and their ability to change direction. Um, but that does not seem like an issue whatsoever with with Drake Stubbs. Nope. And I mentioned Jabari Antoine. He doesn't have any film, but just to talk about him a little bit, this is a top 100 player committed to Miami uh, from New Iberia in Louisiana, which is an LSU kind of stronghold. Very rare for Miami to go into LSU and get going to Louisiana and get a guy that LSU wants like this, a top 100 player at the cornerback position. Miami mean, does have Louisiana ties. Dennis Smith, Chavis Jackson played at LSU. So you do have some ties there. Um, but with Jabari Antoine, he's playing a lot of quarterback this year. Again, you know the film, but talking to coaches and people who are familiar with his senior film, very, very happy with what Jabari Antoine's doing. He's one of those guys. I mean, sometimes you watch a senior film and you're not sure. Jabari Antoine's someone who's rising up the board internally. They already have him. You know, he's committed. But they're very, very happy with Jabari Antoine, what he's doing at the quarterback position athletically, mentally, physically translating to the cornerback spot. Uh, Jabari Antoine, put him in that category of the top players in this class as far as commitments. Chris Ewald, a corner out of Shaman Madonna, a big-bodied defensive back, uh, and we see his highlights here against like, a good New Orleans squad. Yeah, uh, what you see is what you get. He knows how to play corner, 6'1". We've seen him at the camp circuit. This guy's been not a, you know, he's not been a seeker for a while. I think as a sophomore, he was committed to Michigan and Jim Harbaugh. So he's been a, considered a big-time guy for a while with Jeremiah Smith and JoJo Trader. There's been a lot of, of coaches going into Chaminade over the years, as you can imagine. This guy's always been on the radar because of his length. Again, he knows how to play corner. He's a good youth player as well. Shout-out to Go Getta, my man Lenny on the boards. Um, coach him in the youth level. I think DVD also coached Chris Ewald at the youth level. So someone that knows how to play, um, doesn't play like receiver, doesn't play offense, returner. He's one of those guys that's a corner all day. Um, with length and with with knowledge, and has been t battle tested against the best receivers in South Florida, some of the best receivers in the nation. Of course, going against Jeremiah Smith all day, that's the best player you're going to go against anywhere. So uh, he's battle tested. I think he's a guy that um, you know might be picked Miami over Georgia. That tells you the esteem he's held in. 
from coaches uh, across the country. I would say he's a guy that can come in. He's different than Daryl Porter as far as his his body type and the way he plays. But he kind of reminds me of Daryl Porter as far as being a guy that really stuck to the defensive end, stuck to cornerback, and knows what he's doing at the position. Different body type. Not saying he's the same player, but um, corner only type prospect who I think has good upside there. And then we'll round it out here with Tim Merritt out of Birmingham, a guy who this is a clip right here um, with him at quarterback, which he does play. But D, you and I were watching him when we were in Tampa for the USF game. They had his game on on ESPN in one of the places we were at. And good size, looks like he can move a bit and pretty physical as well. Yeah, it was against Carrollton. Julian Lewis was on ESPN. He had a 70-yard or 60-yard run. It was a longer run than what we just saw right there. So he has speed. He has size. He plays safety, plays corner. I think he projects Miami as really a versatile piece. I'll let him try corner. He can also play safety, maybe nickelback as well. So Alabama's been good to the Canes. You look at Camp Pruitt, who's played a little bit here at linebacker. Cole McConathy, who played in Cal on the defense against Cal, clearly ahead of schedule coming out of Alabama. Um, that's a good state for the Miami Hurricanes. Dalen Upshaw, who we highlighted earlier from uh, Phoenix City. Uh, Miami would love to continue to, to get underrated college-ready prospects from Alabama. Tim Merritt's a guy they really like. Look, that's that's everyone that's committed right now. Obviously, they're going to continue working, and we expect big-time players to be added to this class. But this is always a nice exercise to do in the middle of the year, D, because, look, it's one thing when you get excited about these guys after their junior year, but you want to see how they're progressing. You want to see the, the, the sort of production that they're putting up. And look, it's high school. So there a lot of times, a lot of their circumstances are, are depending on what's around them as well. But these guys are showing out this year. Yep. Yeah, before I let you go on merit, 50 for 27 passing 237 yards, obviously not a quarterback prospect. You got to lose nickel for that one touchdown passing 42 rushes, 371 yards, six touchdowns, and then 15 tackles on D. I like versatility personally with my defensive back prospects. I think we need more of these guys that can go score touchdowns on offense because when they get the ball in their hands on defense, they look like Philip Buchanan or Antro Roll. Agreed. So, guys, remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel. As always, we've been keeping things going strong here through the bye week, but we're about to turn the page now in a couple of days. We've been enjoying this cow win. I think we're we're over it, and now should be a nice, relaxing college football weekend without having to worry about you know having a, a cardiac arrest watching this team um, but we'll be getting ready for next week against louisville and then tomorrow of course the boozer twins make their announcement and it's miami or duke miami's been squarely in this thing for a while now i think have been in it longer than people th thought they would actually be in it so decision day is tomorrow and we'll see what happens but would be a huge pickup again like this video subscribe to the channel go canes go canes Yeah, this an insight to the Canes And you know we ain't playing no games Joaquin said dominate, so that's what we do Home of the legends and seventh floor crew Down in Miami where hurricanes brew You here for the rumors, we bring you the news Cause it's all about the you And nobody do it like Canes in sight Nobody do it like Canes in sight Nobody do it like Canes in sight Nobody do it like Canes in sight. It's Canes in sight.